everyone welcome back to another video on my channel the first time i've got my light on uh yeah so welcome back to the video i'm just doing a quick intro to this one i don't usually obviously when i do normal videos but i just wanted to say happy new year to everyone i am filming this on new year's eve I've actually got an hour and a half before I go out, so I need to do my makeup, I need to get changed, and I need to do this hand of nails, which is what I'm going to do now. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to say Happy New Year to everyone, and thank you so much for your support in this year and last, which is when I made my YouTube channel was 2020 in April. So yeah, um, just thank you so much. I can't believe it um, that we're going into the new year still doing YouTube, to be honest, because when I first started, it was more like a hobby for me, not actually like didn't ever really think that people would legit, like, literally follow my channel and want to see more so thank you so much for that um I hope the new year brings everyone good luck and whatever negative happened in 2021 stays there and all positive to come for you um but yeah so happy new year thank you so much as always and let's get into doing this hand because I can't go to this uh friend's house like this <laughs> okay so my, my desk is still a mess from when I did my right hand yesterday um I just didn't have time well, I did have time, I'm not going to lie to you. I did have time to do my left hand. I just couldn't be bothered by the time I'd done my right one. So here we are. We're going to do it today. No, done my right hand. Yeah, I think I said that right. I don't know. Basically, I've done my right hand. I need to do my left. <laughs> um, so as you can just see, we're going to be doing some, um, what's it called? Tapered square full on tips. This is what we're going for. They are the reflective ones. So when you put the flesh on, as you can see, they're super shiny, which I think is an absolute must for New Year's Eve nails. So we're going to be using Real Birds, um, what's it called? Diamond. Well, how can I not remember what it's called? It's literally on the list. So yeah, we're going to be using the Diamond Gel. It is absolutely beautiful. And like I just said, is a must have for this time of year and all the other time of year basically so yeah i'm going to be using this little extends um led lamp light slash thing uh but you can use obviously whatever brand you've got or one off amazon or ebay or whatever um i just need to get some something to put on the desk so i'm sorry if this video seems rushed but it sort of is it's 20 to 6 now and my friend is picking me and my fiance i keep forgetting to say that instead of boyfriend but is picking us up at half past seven and as you can see from the intro i am not ready at all i still need to get dressed uh and i also need to do my face so i need to get a move on with these nails luckily we're going for something quite subtle and like not subtle but like nice and easy basically so it shouldn't take too long and that is why i'm doing the full-on tips as well because it's super super quick as you will tell from this video so first of all i'm gonna prep my nails i'm using this bit from willow academy i'm not actually really touching this the nail itself very much i'm just using this to sort of push back my cuticles so i haven't done anything with these nails yet apart from soak them off which you will have seen actually i think i'm probably going to upload this video before the soak off video which i know makes no sense but it doesn't really make a difference which order you see it in anyway so if you're seeing this and there isn't a soak off video on my channel it's coming um if there is a soak off video on my channel then this one obviously came after so that's that's the order i'm doing it in but yeah i'm not going to do absolutely every single bit like all on camera like i'm going to do like two nails one or two nails of every step on camera and then the design bit at the end because all the nails are different i will do all of those on camera but i don't want to make it too long and too repetitive so like i said we'll just keep it nice and straightforward where i just show you the same thing just once or twice instead of over and over so that's what i'm doing on all of my nails first this is what they look like after that step is complete i'm now just going to go in with my cuticle i'm not going with anything for the cuticle yet i'm going in with some nail clippers if i can find some and i'm just going to cut my nails down um because i don't need them to be long because i'm extending them with this set anyway so the length just sort of gets in the way so just making sure to cut them safely and not cut any skin underneath the nail as you can see on this nail, it does grow quite high. So do you have to be careful with that? And then I'm just, you can also see it on this nail. I don't know if you can, but this line here, that is where my skin is up to basically. So I'm not cutting anything below that, else I'll end up chopping into that. So it's quite helpful really that my uh, the tips of my nails don't have a lot of colour because it makes it much easier to do this step. So I can literally see through where the nails are. So once I've done that, I'm just going to quickly go around with a file just to neaten them up a little bit. Um, so I'm just going to use this Tears Beauty file just to neaten them up like I mentioned. 
and then we're going to go in with a sanding band just to rough up the surface of the natural nail a lot of people believe that you shouldn't use e-file bits on natural nails and that is absolutely fine if you don't want to but me personally i find it much quicker um and i personally don't feel like it's any different to running this over my nail or running a sanding band over because the whole point of sanding bands is to literally do the job of a hand file so yeah i don't i don't see the problem with it but obviously you need to be really gentle on everything i am definitely not gentle enough on my nails but that is not the fault of the e-file itself that is my fault for being too heavy-handed and i say it in every single video that i do my own nails i do know they're not in very good condition i do know that i should look after them more but here we are <laughs> so once i've done that i'm just going to like i said go over the sanding band okay so on a really low rpm i'm then just going to go in with a sanding band on my mandrel bit and like i said i'm literally just roughing the surface i'm not actually putting any pressure on i'm just taking away the shine from the surface of the nail so this shouldn't create any heat or anything don't do the same area over and over again at the same time move around the nail all the time and just really gently don't need to put any pressure on just let the e-file do the work for you it's one of the pros to using an e-file is that you don't need to really put any effort in because it does it all for you so this is what we look like now that i have removed the dust from what i've just done i'm just going to nip off any excess bits of skin that is one thing i don't use my e-file for but that is only because i'm not actually trained to use it for that um so that's why I don't do it because I don't 100% know what I'm doing and I don't want to do it even on myself when I'm not sure. Because um, e-files are all well and good until you use them incorrectly and then life gets a bit stressful. So I'm just nipping any bits that are extra that I don't want. There's not really a major amount to get off because I have only just done the nails that I just took off this hand. So there's not really all that much to remove but that will do so next step is i'm going to get my full-on tips and we are going to find the sizes that i need for my nails so i'm going to just line it up and i'm going to look from side to side and make sure that the nail actually reaches both side walls so i'm going to show you one that's too small just so you can see what i mean and i'll show you one that's too big so if i put this on as you can see i'm going to line it up to this side no you can't see because it's not focused I'm going to line it up to that side. When I turn it over here, I've moved it a bit by accident. When I turn it over here, you can see here there's some nail exposed. We don't want that. We need the tip to suit literally sidewall to sidewall, no gaps either side, else they will just pop up. Pop up if they don't fit because they have too much pressure. So if we use one that's too big, as you can see, this covers my whole nail and the sidewall. So that would over leak and then that would also pop off because it would be attached to skin. And obviously it's not made to be attached to skin. So I'm just going to line these up with my nails and then I'll come back for the next step. If you've got two um, sizes, like one is slightly too big and one is slightly too small, always use the one that is slightly too big and just file it to shape. Um, don't use one that's too small because that's even more of a problem if you've got one that's too big you can just file the side walls so now it's coming to the point where i'm going to be fitting these in a minute so i'm just going to pop it up to my nail and this one's a pretty good match but this side down here is a little bit too wide so i'm just going to get my hand file and just file that corner away a little bit i'm going to do a really tiny bit at a time because i want it to be absolutely perfect for my nail specifically that looks much better but still a tiny bit too wide at this, uh, this angle. So I'm just going to get rid of that and then put it back on and it fits perfectly. So that's my thumb. And then we've got my index finger. So I'm just popping it up to my nails with every single one and just making sure that they all fit perfectly because these nails are obviously not made for your nails specifically. They are made just in general. Um, so it is likely that you will have to tailor them even a little bit just slightly to your natural nails because they're not made for everybody perfectly um so yeah i'm just taking some bits off so once i've done that the next step is to prep the tips themselves like my nails are prepped now the tips are perfect for my nails specifically so we need to make sure that they're prepped so the inside needs to be etched to make it nice and rough because obviously i am going to be applying these as gel but even if i was applying with acrylic you still need a rough surface it to adhere so we're going to do that on the inside first make sure we get everywhere and make sure that when you put it on your nail all of the bit that's going to be touching your nail is etched so there isn't any shiny bits 
I'm going to flip it over, take off some of the bulk of the cuticle area and side walls and this will just make it a little bit more flush but we don't want to take off too much because I still want to be able to like do it when it's on the nail as well so I'm just going to do that. So next step I almost didn't record, I've already done my thumb, I'm just base coating my nails. You want to make sure that you only get the base coat exactly where you want it. If you do get it on your skin or anywhere you don't want it, make sure to remove it before you put it in the lamp, else you will cure it to where you don't need it. And we want to avoid allergies as well, so keep it off the skin. And again, if you do get it on the skin, just get it off before it goes in the lamp. If you're worried, like if you have quite a thin base coat, I am using Super Base from Gel Perfection, so it is quite thick because it is a rubber base coat. But if you are using quite a thin one, you are worried it's going to run or do whatever you don't want it to do, then just pop it in the lamp to flash cure it for a little bit. Um, and that will keep it still. If you just pop it in for 10 seconds, that will keep that nail's base coat still while you do the next one and then so on. It is much quicker to just flash cure your base coat on each nail as you go along than it is to do them all and then have to clean up the ones that are flooded like while you've been doing the other like the last three or whatever um cleanups definitely take way way longer than it does to just flash go each nail for 10 seconds so it's definitely worth doing that if you feel the need to if not obviously just do them all and then pop them all in at once but if you do flash cure them make sure that once you've done your last nail you do put them all in for a full cure so all of them have had the full amount of time for their curing so once we've done that, we're going to go in with the first one that we need to apply. So I'm going to do the thumb just because it's easy for you to see. I have actually flooded the side of that a little bit, which is annoying. I just didn't check before I put it in the lamp. But first things first, you want to make sure that you've got no dust on your um, full on tip because that will also promote for it to lift. I need to figure out how I'm going to put. I need to have my uh, this in in shot but i'm not sure how the heck i'm going to do that so basically what i do is i have this hanging off my phone stand at the moment but i hang it off my lamp or wherever i can get it basically it's pulling my phone down now <laughs> um but then i just turn that on and have it dangling and then i'm ready to use it when i need it i can just put my thumb straight under it so once i've put the the builder gel on here and pressed it on and it's where i need it i will then bring it over to there flash cure it for a minute and then we can move on to the next one unfortunately i can't get it in shot but I'm literally just going to be holding it there. It's not anything exciting. So I'm going to be using um, Builder Gel from Gel Perfection. And it is nude Builder Gel. This one is. It's almost empty. So I might end up having to use a different one for like the rest of the nails. But it's fine. So first of all, you want to make sure you keep it out of the way of the light, obviously. Else it will cure before you even get it on your nail. And then first of all, I just like to apply like a slip layer sort of thing to the whole nail. About the length that I think my thumbnail is. And then once I've done that and that's all on there and I know that it's all nice and covered, I will then get some excess product onto my brush. I've tilted my bottle to try and get it all to the bottom so I can get it out easier. There is hardly anything left in this bottle but I am really determined to get to the last bit of it. I don't mind when it's my own nails doing this but I wouldn't do it with somebody else. But basically I just like to get some on my brush, there's hardly any on it but you'll get the idea brush onto it from this angle and then also from the other side there's really not a lot on this brush at the moment but I will need a little bit more product than that and that is how I apply it so I'm just going to get some more on my brush definitely should have warmed it up before I used it to make my life easier but never mind I'm tipping I'm tilting the thumbnail this way so the product automatically runs that way instead of having too much at the cuticle oil, at the cuticle area I don't know what I'm saying and then once I've done that, I'm just going to hold it this way around just for a second to help that product flow that way. And then we're going to apply. It's going to be really tricky on camera, but I'm going to try my best. So you want to make sure that you apply it about here and then I push it back. And then you can see the product climbing up the nail. And then when it gets to the tip, that is when you will put it under the lamp. And then we're going to give it a few seconds under that little light. And then once it's had enough time, we can move on to the next nail. So next one is my index finger. I'm just going to apply it in the same way. I'm going to make sure I've got some on there like as a slip layer. And then it makes it easier for all the bulk of the product to flow to where that is. And then again, we're just going to wipe off both sides of the brush. 
I'm only doing both sides because there's hardly anything on it. If there was a lot on my brush, then obviously I wouldn't need to do that, but that's just because it's almost empty. And then I'm just going to pop a little bit more on there. It's super difficult to do these on camera. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing again. I'm going to flip it over and then get into position and we're just going to press it on. Wait till it gets to the end of my nail and then straight under the light to keep it exactly where it is. And then once it's been under there a few seconds, you can let go to make it a bit easier for yourself. Go around the sides and remove any excess if you do have any overflow. If not, then fab. And then that will keep it in place while you do the others. So I'm just going to do the other three and then I will fully cure them all and then we can get on to filing. Okay, so this is what they look like. I now need to take the length down because as you can see from the other hand, I have taken quite a lot of it down. I basically just filed off the numbers um, and then filed them into shape sort of thing. This bulky bits underneath, as you can see here, we are going to remove first. So first of all, I'm going to get my Willow Academy e-file bit. I'm going to do the rest of the filing with a hand file now so I'm just going to be tapering them in a little bit so I'm just going to do that first before anything else I'm just going to get my, my file at the side of the nails and just take the sides in a little bit I think crazy just tapering them in slightly I'm going to do that on all of them before I even look at the length also I just want to mention that there is a thumb a thumb there is a air bubble uh, on the thumbnail but because I'm not going to be keeping these on for very long like probably going to take them off in two days um, I am just going to leave it whereas if I was leaving them on and if it was on a client I would absolutely have to get rid of that and sort that problem out because you don't want you don't want air bubbles but like I said I'm not going to be wearing them for very long so it's all good so just tapering them still and then once I've done that we can compare them to the other hand look at the lengths see if we can get them nice and similar so this one obviously is very wonky but that's just one I've done it quickly with my e-file we'll then go in with the hand file make it nice and straight and try and get it as similar to my other hand as possible perfect and we're just going to do that all the way across. I'm going to do all that off camera and then I'm going to go in with my sanding band over the top of the nails just to rough up the surface because obviously they are perfect already. They don't need any refining or anything because they just come perfect. Um, so I'm just going to rough up the surface and we can get into the design. Okay, so that is them all applied and filed down and buffed, ready for application of colours. So first of all, I'm going to show you what I'm going to be using. So obviously, like I mentioned earlier, we are going to be using the diamond gel, which is here. And this is 142, the beautiful silver. As you can see, I have ruined my right hand <laughs> when filing. So I am going to re-top coat this nail just to make it a bit shinier because it's got um, scratches on it now. But other than that, this hand has stood well. So that's good. So I am going to be doing the same, well, similar to what's on this hand, but I'm going to be doing it on this one, obviously. And I'm going to mix it up like in terms of where the nails are so i'm still going to have two and one of these each but they're going to be on different nails so i'm going to have my pinky and index finger glittery and then we're going to have this one with the glitter fade this one with this sort of design and then this one with the line down the middle i think so i'm going to get straight into it because like i said i am on a bit of a time restraint so i'm going to paint the silver nails first because i'll forget which ones i said were meant to be silver if i don't do those first so i'm going to do them too so that's those i'm just popping some on there just so i know um, but look how glittery this stuff is. It's honestly just magical. To be honest with you, I'm not massively keen on working with it. Like it's not like a really nice creamy gel or anything. Obviously it's not going to be because it's um, very, very concentrated with glitter. But I love, I do like the outcome, I'm not going to lie. And at first I was a bit sceptical. I did, I did feel like a little bit underwhelmed by it because obviously on camera it looks magical like so so good and it still does look much better on camera than it does in real life but i have noticed it a lot more since having it on me um 
like when I go into my kitchen which is spotlights of LED it does look much better than it does in a room where we don't have LED spotlights so it does make a difference uh, the light but not to the extent of how the camera makes it look like it doesn't look like that in person but you know let's just move past it so I'm going to do this on those two nails I'm actually just going to do the base of all of them and then we'll do the designs together okay so this is what they look like with two coats of both colours on we've got two coats of the glitter and two coats ugh, two coats of the black so I'm going to need three brushes for this set I'm going to be using the blend it brush from Erin's collection all three are from Erin's collection of course because I love them and I rave them in every single video that I actually do nail art in, but there you go. So we've got Blend It, and then we've also got, where are they actually? Oh, there they are. Then we've got the Erin's Favourite brush and the Bestie brush. They're basically both the same, but one is shorter than the other one. The shorter one is Bestie, the longer one is Erin's Favourite. So we're going to be doing this design. So like I said, on my thumb, I'm going to be doing the one with this line down the middle. So we'll just do that first, because it's super, super easy. Literally just straight down the middle. Can make it as thick or as thin as you want i'm just going to do it like medium thickness like i want it thick enough for you to be able to see it but i don't want it to be like a really big block line down the middle so just doing it about uh do it a little bit thicker than that i suppose build that up just a little bit more i want to be able to see it at least there you go that's better more like it so that's that one done super easy and then we're going to be doing a fade nail so i'm going to use the bestie brush to pick up some product so i'm just going to get a little blob uh, i'm actually going to do yeah i'm still going to do it on this one so i'm just going to blob some of this diamond gel at the cuticle area of this nail and first things first before I do any like blending or anything I'm just going to make sure that the cuticle area does have product on it and it's nice and neat but it won't look like a fade if the cuticle area is really thin and then I'm just going to add a little bit more bring it down a little bit further I'm just going to bring it down the side walls because it's easier to do with this brush than it is the blending brush and then once I've done that, I'm going to get my blend it brush. And we're literally just going to do as it says on the tin. I'm just going to pull it down and blend it out. There's a hair on it, which is not helpful. There we go. I'm just going to use that brush to just blend it down the nail. Until we get it how we want it. And then once it's how we want it to be, we can just leave that one alone. Super, super simple, but really effective. Uh, let me just turn the flash on. Look how sparkly they are. I mean, it barely focused because they're that sparkly. Let's turn it off. Right, so this ring finger is super, super easy. We're going back in with Erin's favourite brush. And we're going to create a line... That one goes that way so this one's going to go that way this way there we go <laughs> i don't know why i get so confused with this but i can never get my head around which way everything's meant to go so we're just going to start down here and bring it to this corner just doing it really lightly for now just to get everything where i want it and then when i'm happy with where everything is i can go in and make the lines a little thicker but i don't want it to be too thick because we're going with like relatively thin lines. We just want it thick enough for you to be able to see it, like the thumbnail sort of thing. And then we're going to go straight up to that corner. We're going to meet with it across the top and then down the side just to create like a, a corner a corner outline of French. If that makes any sense? There's probably a name for it. I just don't know what it is. If there is a name for it, well, if you know a name for this design... I know there's always multiple of everything, but whatever you know it as, please let me know in the comments. Got a little hair on that one. I'm just trying to get off without putting another hair on it by accident because my hands, for some reason, are really hairy at the moment. And I'm just going to bring that down the side. 
make it nice and neat and then just full cut this a little bit because I will file the side walls as well I don't want to file off all of the products so I'm just going to make this a little bit thicker just to give space for that to happen okay and then across the top again and then once I'm happy we can pop that in the lamp super super simple but really effective so I'm just going to pop that in the lamp then and then all we need to do then is just top coat okay so this is the finished set I mean I need to wash my hands and stuff and get all the dust off them clearly but this is what they look like I definitely need to go and wash my hands so I'm going to do that first I've also I'm just top coating this ring finger as well so that looks nice and fresh but I'm going to go wash my hands pop a bit of cuticle oil on and then we can have a look at how they turned out okay so here they are this is without the flash and then let's pop it on that's with it let me just get rid of my normal lighting as well so you can see it even better but look at those i mean i absolutely love how they turned out let me just get my other hand as well i need to sneeze sorry just had to pause that to sneeze but look this is how they turned out i definitely need to wash my hands better because that is still black from the polish but look i absolutely love them these are the thumbs i'm so 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 happy with how these turned out um i hope you like them too i actually quite like enjoyed doing these as well i don't usually enjoy doing my own but yeah i hope you enjoyed this video again happy new year to all of you thank you so much for the support you give my channel and i'll be back soon with another video bye